Hey, Legends, welcome back to the Mason Cock Show. Big episode today. Geelong still undefeated. GWS smashed Brisbane this week. And then the draw of Anzac Day, we're going to dissect that and what exactly happened and how we felt after. Because I feel like there was a lot of people that didn't know how to feel after that one. So there is that and much, much more in this episode that we are starting right now. Hey, Legends. Welcome back to the Mason Cock Show. This is a massive, massive episode. A lot happened over the weekend, so we're going to go straight into it. So, Brayden, welcome to the pod. What do you got for us? We're going to go clangers off the top, as we always do. Clangers off the top. Well, I've got a a ripper for you because I watched the uh, Fremantle game. Big win uh, Mm. over the Bulldogs. We'll talk about that one later. But my clanger come from the post-match. Now, yep. normally we do in-match. Normally I try to snipe a couple of umpires <laughs> for some uh, terrible decisions. Classic they, fam. They were pretty good this week, but I'm going to give it to Ryan Daniels, who interviewed uh, Andrew, Andrew Brayshaw yeah. after the match, uh, who unfortunately we all remember got punched in the face uh, yep. by Gaff uh, way mm-hmm. back in the day. We all like to forget that that happened. Uh Probably none more than Andrew Brayshaw. The person himself. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Ryan Daniels uh, wanted to bring this up in the weirdest way because he said, last week you were punched in the face by an up-and-coming oh, no. young West Coast Eagles team uh, and just deadpan. I, I don't know. Some people think he's doing it on purpose. I'd yeah. like to give him the benefit of the doubt, but it was just a shocker. Just, <laughs> just if you were going to say that to any player in the entire league, not that guy. Probably not the guy that got. What was his facial face. reaction? Did you just, just look at him like you can't be serious? I think, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so wild uh, that surely he's thinking he couldn't have meant that. He couldn't have meant it. But uh, I don't know. I, we'll give him the benefit of the doubt, but we'll give him the clangor at the same time because yeah, it was just a real. Bad choice of words. <laughs> know your audience. Know your audience. Know the guys <laughs> know the that guy got you're punched in the face. So. Oh, man. Well, I'll go into mine. Mine's got a bit of a story behind it. So I was in Adelaide over the weekend. Went to the Live Golf Tournament after Anzac Day. And, um, you know, Friday rolled around, played a bit of golf. Uh, sorry, I didn't play a bit of golf. Helped out some friends with some golf because I couldn't play because of my hand. And then uh, we went and watched the golf for the weekend. And on Friday, we went out for dinner to this place, which turned into a pub. You know, and uh, a few drinks and stuff were being tossed around at the pub. And all of a sudden, this uh, this song came on. And this song is an iconic Australian anthem, I guess you could say. It's it's called Eagle Rock, oh, right? Yeah. And you being a country boy, I feel like you've probably done this. Yeah. The anticipation behind what happens whenever Eagle Rock comes on. And I'm in a, you know, in a pub in Adelaide. There's, you know, very inebriated people around me. I'm sober at the time. And... This song comes on. All of a sudden, I see guys whipping off their belts, unzipping their pants, and I'm going, what in God's name is about to happen? And then all of a sudden, all the guys just drop their like pants and just start waddling around. It's not even a dance. It's more of a shuffle. You start shuffling around, and I'm kind of wondering what's happening. And then, and then I'm sitting there, and this person comes around the corner. It's a girl, and she's fully gone the shirt off. And then the pants down. And I'm sitting here and just baffled by the situation of what's going on. I'm not sure if a porno is about to happen or something (laughs) in this Adelaide pub. But everyone's sitting there shuffling around with, like, minimal clothes on. And I I put it out on socials. And people were just amazed that I'd never seen it before. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Does no. this happen in Rochi a lot? No, does no. this happen in the country? I actually didn't even know. At weddings is what everyone told me. No, Apparently I didn't even know thing. that it's a thing. But th- did you join in? No, I, no, hell no. I was like, you know what? I, you know, I looked at my friend. I go, I think it's about time to leave. <laughs> I, was like, I think this is my cue for me to get out of this pub. Good time to get the Mason Cox out. Now I thought, <laughs> oh, oh, I, I thought that that's got to be the second least you know, most scarring time that you've heard that song because they obviously play it after every West Coast Eagles win. Do they actually? Yeah, so I thought you might have heard it a couple of times. Do, uh, I wonder if do all the supporters just whip off the fence and go that's, trotting around that's, the stadium at Optus? I don't know. I normally leave when they start busting out the, oh the Eagle Rock, but um, that's... Yeah, that's a scary one when you don't know what's happening. It was just, it was so left of field. I just like kind the, of was like in the corner of this booth, like, I, I need to get out of here. The police are just leave. about to kick the door in on. and there's there's you oh. caught up in a in a um, 
I don't know. Uh, you'd be front page, back page of the news. I don't know, but apparently Adelaide does some very unique things. But hey, I was told it's an Australia thing. It's not just Adelaide. It's a country thing. But that is my, my clanger of the week. I was cornered into a lot of people getting undressed. <laughs> I don't know how to else, how else to put it, to be honest with you. That's yeah. I, I still haven't seen it. So maybe I should head over to Adelaide and, and give it a run. Harrow's looking like he does it all the, <laughs> like, all the time. Last in Rochi. I was there. I yeah. thought it was common knowledge that everybody does that. Uh, see? See, it is a thing. I don't know. I don't oh. know. But it might be a younger generation thing from what I've been told. Oh, yeah, younger okay. people thing. Oh, younger well, thing. younger people stop it because it sounds real <laughs> creepy. Jesus. Let's jump into the games because we're up and running with Richmond, Melbourne. Was I thought it was going to be an exciting one to kick off the mm. uh, week, but as tends to happen, the, yep. f- the first game this year, pretty much every round except for one, has been a bit of a fizzer. Uh, around all the excitement, the the setup, the um, Anzac Eve. Day yep. Eve experience, Flawless, as per usual. Yeah. Uh, awesome to see. Uh, but the game itself, Melbourne now five straight Anzac Day Four. Eves. They've won in a row. And this one was... Do you look to change the opposition? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, pre- it's pretty convincing, this one. Uh, the Tigs were in it till about half time. Yeah. Which is commendable with the amount of injuries they've got. It's a tough run. Uh, and then Melbourne just kind of ran away with it. The usual suspects, Lever, 26 touches, 11 marks. 15 intercepts. Triple double. Stephen May <laughs> got 23 and 12 marks. Now, Golly. I feel like at some point they're going to have to fall. Did off. they take a mark inside forward 50? Yeah, like, that's, a, that's a lot of marks that is inside a lot. 50 that's for a duo. <laughs> 23 marks. Between the, okay, all right. I feel like they're, they've been a constant issue for teams for the best part of what, however long Stephen May's been there now. Yeah. 10 years or so. Mm. Probably not that long, but pushing it. Um, but yeah, uh, unfortunate Jacob Hopper out with a hamstring and he was in big denial. <laughs> he was, yeah, he refused to acknowledge it. I, it sucks. It sucks. But yeah, it was the, he kind of looked really down and frustrated. And yeah. then the runner came out, the physio or whatever, and was like, push away. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> but still definitely looked like he yeah. wasn't good. And then, yeah, eventually came off. Unfortunate for him. Uh, but some good news out of this one, not for Richmond, mm. uh, Daniel Turner. Uh, in his fourth game, kicked three goals. Mm. There's uh, every year. There's always a a couple of kids that bob up and yep. kick goals, and it's so exciting. The team gets right around them. Uh, gone again, big twenty three, one goal, ten marks, uh, twenty six hitouts. Jeez, just does it just every <laughs> single week, Mister Consistent. Uh, even uh, though he's he's getting old, he's getting old, but he uh, just keeps keeping I, on. Rockman can play till they want to f- retire. That's the way I look at it. At least I hope so. <laughs> Until they're sick uh, of cop and knocks. <laughs> GWS Brisbane. Uh, I'll move it to the next one. This wow! Was, wow! Wee! Oh, Brisbane. I remember. Mate, what are we doing? <laughs> what's cast going your mind on? back. What's going on? Brisbane used to be good. Now I don't know what's happening. I I feel like if you're a Brisbane fan watching this post game. Mm. You look for little signs from your coach, and Chris Fagan said, look, I don't want to be all doom and gloom, but we've been a pretty good team for the the past five years. Now, yeah. when I hear that true, true statement, they've been pretty true. good. But I'm thinking, is that is that a bit of, we're probably not going to have a good year this year. We're, we're two and five, a bit of white flag about it. Interested to see so, how man. it goes, but... Geez, didn't they get pumped against GWS? They looked pretty non-competitive. Biggest loss for the year for Brisbane. Yeah. And just, yeah, not a much to get excited about. Something for GWS fans, though, local boy. They played in Canberra. Mm-hmm. Tom Green, 37 touches, seven clearances, and a snag. This guy's a freak. Yeah. He look. seems every single week, it seems like he's getting 35-plus touches. Yeah, it would he be nice. He just is all over the place. He's one of the... Uh, Wow, some of the unsung heroes of the league, I feel like, at the moment. I feel yeah. like he probably doesn't get a lot of credit being up there in Sydney. We don't see as much of it, but he is one of the uh, the top players in the league that's absolutely been killing it. And the team's just jam-packed with stars. I feel like Sydney has that the same... That happens the AFL bails you out yeah. and gives you millions of dollars, <laughs> isn't it? <laughs> Sydney has the same problem where it's hard to pick a best on because they're all just so damn talented. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's he just keeps racking them up. Dan and her goal is second week in a row. We'll give him a bit of a pass because last week it was piss and rain Four. against uh, Geelong. Uh, not a lot of goal kickers for Brisbane either. They couldn't crack the 10 goals. Mm. Uh, and then we got Darcy Jones on Love debut. This. Yeah, Great story. He came out wearing, hard to miss him. 
Yeah. Okay, he's got his hair flowing out the bottom this of is... his bucket because he's wearing a helmet. The, um, this is or- going to be iconic, I think. Orange and grey <laughs> helmet. Look, great look. It looked great. Uh, but oh, uh, man. managed to kick two goals and just got up and about. Family was there. Yeah. Things you love to see. We put it in that category. Yeah, positivity of the AFL. It was uh, it was great to see him be successful in his first game. But GWS, boy, do they look scary. Mm. Keep on keeping on after the loss to Carlton. Yeah, probably the, up there with two of the four favourites. Um, and then Brisbane, big match with them next week against the Gold Coast Suns. Oh, man, battle well, for Queensland. Well, let's jump over to Port St Kilda because although Port managed to win, golly, this is wild. Yeah. Wow, it was just an absolute car crash and. We don't like to see injuries, but nah. we don't like to see injuries to just the best players. The big boys of the competition. <laughs> and my God. <laughs> the names. They, they couldn't have. It's right down the, the spine, really. It's Pow Pepper out with an ACL. Prayers up to yeah, uh, Pow Pepper. Uh, he'll be out for the rest of 2024 with that ACL. Kind of new straight away. Dropped the ball. Yeah. Had the ball, landed, and then just dropped it because he had to hold onto his knee. Not great. Uh, we got little Jackie Higgins uh, copped a... He's got a couple of games. He's taken it to the tribunal as we uh, record this. Yep. Dangerous tackle on Aaliyah Aaliyah. Aaliyah went out with concussion. concussion. Yep. So that's a key defender for them. Very Two weeks on the sideline. Big interceptor. So, yep. yeah, he'll be down. Uh, and then Rosie, mm. one of their – Killing it this year. Absolute Absolutely guns. Uh, yeah, out with a hammy. So that's three massive outs going into the um, showdown next week. Four. It'll be a massive one. Uh, Jeez, Dixon right, kicked four. It's good to see the old fella. He's, He's back. They chose to rest him. Yeah. And then he comes out the next week and kicks four. I think that's a pretty big tick for um, resting the older blokes. Yes. It's um, it's one of those things I think like he's obviously been in the league for a long time. and He's very capable. We see him every single time he plays. He's definitely the threat in the forward line. Mm. Um, and yeah, it's just, it just sucks. Like you, you kind of have kicks, uh, you know, Dixon kicking four, you know, you get the win at home, but then the biggest kind of news that's going to come out of this is some of your star players going down and being significant injuries for a long time. So, uh, it's, it's going to be interesting, obviously going into, like you mentioned the, uh, you know, the big rivalry next week with Adelaide. Some Adelaide fans would be pretty excited about mm. this result, I think. Uh, but I want to bring up something that was positive that did happen in this game. Now yeah. at halftime. They, you know, it's in Adelaide. Adelaide had to live golf over the weekend, like I mentioned. And there was a golfer, Hendrik Stinson, who won a car for a fan. Now, can you imagine sitting in the sitting in the crowd? You're just chilling there. Some guy goes, hey, you want to you do this competition? You don't have to do anything. You just have to stand there. You it's just crazy. stand on the side. You don't move a muscle. You don't have to do anything physical. You won't embarrass yourself. You just be there, and you might win a car. No catch. No catch whatsoever. So Stinson just steps up to the tee. Has a swing, gets it close enough to the pin to win the guy with the car, and the guy goes, oh, how freaking good is this? It's pretty wild. Well, it just goes home, brand new car. Didn't do shit for it. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Why not? Oh, that guy had the best day ever, I think. Because imagine if they came up to you and said, mate, one golf shot to win a car. Oh. Mate, I couldn't even hit the ball. Oh, <laughs> they, it would be an absolute just. <laughs> imagine the pressure. You got the whole oval looking at you. You're like, you suck at <laughs> golf as it is. You're like lining it up. You're shaking and you got to hit this thing. What? And it was. Closest to the pin, which was in the, in the center, center circle. circle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's and a big hit. He landed it, landed it. The guy won the car, and then everyone in Adelaide Oval went absolutely bonanza. He looked so unfazed. Did Hendrick? Hendrick? Uh, Henrik, yeah, Henrik. Yeah. Henrik Stenson. Uh, he looked so unfazed that it was like, just like it was a given. Yeah, he well, just I mean, went like, like a, yeah, easy, walked off. Oh, you got to think, what is it, 150 meters? 100, no, 100 meters? Probably 100 meter hit. So par yeah. three, short par three. I mean, you get within probably 10 meters as a professional golfer. I feel like most do it. That's pretty crazy. You know? It is. It is. Like, I watched it over the weekend. That What they can hit and how close they can hit it to the pin and where and stuff. Like, it just blows your mind. Because you sit there and you step up and shit, you'd be happy just hitting in one direction. Much less close to something that you're actually aiming for. So, now that was a really cool kind of thing over the weekend I saw. And the whole stadium went nuts for it. And, yeah, this this, this person just rocks up and gets a free car for doing nothing. They did, um, (laughs) the AFL did the video where... They had a football-shaped golf ball, yes. and the players had to try putt it into the into the hole on the green. I thought that was um, 
That was cool. It shows how hard the oval ball is. Yeah, it's 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 the weirdest thing you'll ever see. It's the dang uh, We'll move into the next game. We've got North Melbourne versus Adelaide. Uh, now, this one was down in Tasmania. Yeah. You know, was, they haven't built the new stadium oh. yet. You know, they're over at the University of Taz, which might be the future stadium because I don't know if that's going to actually happen. Don't so know. <laughs> we'll figure that out. But North Melbourne... You know, they had a tough one again. They were there. Mm. They were. They turned up at the 81 stadium. 81 to 138. Yeah. Adelaide kicked it. And it's not like Adelaide was coming in off, you know, raging hot success. Yeah. They weren't, you know, steamrolling other teams or didn't have a lot of momentum. It was like Adelaide really struggling coming into this one. Uh, and, yeah, they were really just taking the piss. Walking, if you've seen some of the highlights, yeah. uh, Rochelle, no joke, just – Nutmeg the bloke, handballed it through his legs, ran around him, picked it up, uh, dished it off, and set up the goal. Rankin sold candy, going pretty much the wrong way to go. Yep. And the bloke ate it up. Then he just ran in, nom, kicked nom, another nom. goal. Uh, Tex candied to the man on the mark and ran inside 50, That's kicked never one. Never a good feeling. It's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's, I feel so bad for him. I feel bad for North fans, even though it doesn't seem like it because I'm just saying how shit they are every week. But I don't know. I, yeah, at this point in time, he because you're looking at West Coast have been really competitive. You look yeah. at Hawthorne, and they've been thereabouts in patches. They obviously got flogged this weekend as well. But I don't know. Need to what see. What do you consider a, a you know a pass mark for North Melbourne this season? Then I feel like most teams are starting to do it. They've got a bit of a blueprint. Depending, like it doesn't even matter where they are on the ladder. You bring pressure. You bring effort. Yeah, like that, and that can take you so far. Yep. You see Essendon have really built their kind of game around it this year. They just said, let's go full-blown pressure and see where it gets us. And they've been in games. They've been winning games. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just lift pressure. Pressure leads to turnovers, leads to goals. It's. It, mm. I don't feel like it's that crazy. Obviously, I don't do it for a living. But, <laughs> you know, if someone said run What's out a key there. indicator, you'd say? Chase and pressure. tackle. Chase, chase and tackle. Make chase sure and tackle. Not, we'll look at sure your tackles after the game. We'll look at your pressure acts and see what's going on. But they're just getting walked around at the moment. So, mm. um, and yeah, it must be frustrating because they do have a fair bit of talent on the list. Yeah. Um, it just They just don't seem to be improving. And I was reading that, you know, I think Clarko's got 75 um, games left on his con- contract. Oh, on his, yeah. uh, so there hasn't been any improvement really under him. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what the journey forward is because no doubt you have to stick fat with Clarkson and see where it gets. But you need you need some signs. Like, fans just want to see some signs. Some kind of hope, I think. And yeah. I feel like that just comes through pressure. If you can look at your team, they lost by 30, 40, 50 points, and you mm-hmm. say, but they gave it a crack. They really stuck in. They were thereabouts for most of the game or whatever. But when you got players just walking around you, Rankin kicked four, Laird had 34, 13 clearances and a goal. Dawson had 769 meters gained. I feel like if there's pressure on Dawson, he doesn't go for almost a kilometer. <laughs> like, yeah, they got a lift. Uh, unfortunately for Adelaide, Pedler out with a bit yep. of a shoulder injury. Um, and he's been in and out, but um, he's shown some really good glimpses for Adelaide. Adelaide, on the other hand, they're up and about. They go into the showdown buoyed by, you know, some outs for Port Adelaide and coming off a bit of success over North. Uh, so it'll be interesting going into the showdown next week. And on one last different note, out of Adelaide, Rory Sloan announced mm. his retirement effective immediately, uh, citing uh, his eye injury, obviously, you know, a fair bit about. And yeah. uh yeah, tell us about your reaction to that, and you know, kind of, you can you went through similar things. Mm, yeah, he um, he obviously was trying the different like goggles and stuff this year. Uh, reached out, and um, uh, he's he's effective, I guess, immediately. Uh, he's retired now, so because of these eye injuries, so it's something he's definitely taken seriously, and he struggled to be able to to probably get the proper vision back to to be able to play and. It's got to be frustrating because it's something that's not a, um, it's not like a, a hamstring that you can recover. Or it's not like a, you know, doing something you can do rehab on and things like that. You know, it's something that's it's kind of uncontrollable after it happens. So it's got to be frustrating for him. Uh, you know, prayers up go to him and his family. He's got an incredible, uh, you know, group of of uh, a wife and kids and all that. And um, you know, he's I saw him actually over the weekend at Live Golf. He was enjoying himself. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. So. Uh, Kind of funny now to hear that he's retired. <laughs> That's <laughs> effective immediately whenever um, he's having a grand old time over there in Adelaide. But uh, he's a legend. He's one of the legends of the game. Um, I think he's one of those people everyone always looks at as a really good guy, um, someone who everyone has a lot of respect for and 
the way he goes about it. And um, yeah, it's, you know, you know, wish him all the best in the next kind of part of his life and the next career he has. But uh, yeah, sad day to, to have him have to retire. Over 250 games Over 250, for yeah. Adelaide. Massive, massive. And uh, yeah, ripping bloke. And he's done a lot for the game, so mm. I'm no doubt the game will look after him in return. So prayers up uh, and congratulations to Rory Sloan on a massive career uh, over in Adelaide. Move on to the next game. we got Geelong versus Carlton. This is one of the most exciting matches of the round. Obviously, both teams in form. Geelong undefeated. Carlton uh, seems to be just kicking goals left, right, and center. And this was mm. a really close one at the end. Yeah. But Geelong had kind of... Yeah, I had momentum for most of the game, you could say. Yeah, I feel like it's a little misleading in in the final score because really Carlton were flying home. And mm. that I still think that's an understatement. But like watching the first three quarters or the first three and a half quarters, um, Adelaide, I mean, uh, Geelong are just so mature. Yeah. Like they they have really good time management. They know when to go fast, go slow. They know when to, you know, start chipping it around. Like they're... That bloody, like, mature, switched on, it helps when you got, like, Hawkins has all the experience. Yeah. Cameron's an absolute jet. He managed to kick five from his 17 touches, and including his 600th goal, which is oh. pretty amazing. And 600. I feel like he could still play anywhere. Um, he does play anywhere. He just does whatever he wants. He'll yeah. see him in the back line, then in the forward line, then in the mids. Reminds me of um, Richo, Matthew Richardson, when he was, like, the guy up forward, and then when... Um, Rewalt was coming in, Jack yeah. Rewalt. They kind of shunted him to the wing. Mm. And then he just, he almost won a brown low from the wing, just from the wing. <laughs> racking up touches, kicking goals. <laughs> Jez can kind of just do them from anywhere. Uh, but yeah, Carlton trailed by 33 halfway through the last quarter. Yeah. Carlton kicked four in five and a half minutes. That's scary. And yeah, I felt that was the one thing that was very noticeable. So obviously, Geelong home game. Yeah. Too big to have it in Geelong, they say. Yeah, so yeah. they had it at the MCG. Yeah, Geelong and is a I bit can, of a financial pump. I can see, you know, the why fans might have an issue with that because Carlton fans were way louder than the Geelong <laughs> fans. When Carlton started to turn it on, because it went dead quiet because yeah. they were getting pumped. pumped yeah, yeah. And then it took still a couple of these goals to like, Get them into Get it. Get energy in. And yeah. when Akers kicked two in quick succession. When he bounced off about seven people, oh, stiffed arms, slotted a goal after that. The crowd going, came to life. Go. I felt like they were locking their cars and running back to the MCG <laughs> because they just started pouring it on. And, uh, yeah, none other than Jeremy Cameron kind of kicked the sealer right mm, at the end. But, as you'd expect. Yeah, Carlton put up a fight to the end, which you'd like to see, but at the same time, Carlton were kind of – you know, getting convincingly beaten by Geelong, I feel, up until that point. Uh, Zach Tui kind of snuck forward and kicked three. Yeah, I love that. He just knows love when that. to strike, doesn't Dude, he? He's a he's one of my favorite players, obviously being an international boy. But um, to see uh, the Irishman kicking three goals, I don't think that happens very often. So no. it was cool to see him uh, ball up into the forward line and be yeah. able to kick a few. Cripper, 29 disposals, eight clearances, two goals. So he was pretty good in their defeat. Also, Sam Walsh just kept racking him up. As you do. Uh, Dangerfield, <laughs> though, injured his hammy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's it's obviously it's it's bad. Mm. He's, he's, he's just two games back from a hammy that he sustained in round two. Uh, but at the same time, when you've won every single game, you got a luxury of saying, mate, take your time. Yeah. Come do back. what they did with Charlie Dixon. Yeah. Take an extra week. Come back Maybe in your own a, time. Yeah, a bit more time and to uh, be able to get back to, to normality. It is interesting, though, because the Geelong was a team that everyone I felt like looked at last year whenever they weren't going so well and said, oh, is it time to start mm. bringing some of the youth through and start like not playing some of the older guys? And now you sit here and look at them, you know, six, seven rounds in, and they're undefeated. And one of the reasons for that is because all those experienced players are all playing together and they're getting wins on the board. So it's yeah. this funny dynamic of last year – because they had won a premiership the year before and then like weren't going so well, everyone's going, oh, do we just push the big red button, start back over? Or do we continue on with some of these players for a little bit longer and see if there's an opportunity for for maybe another flag? So, you know, proof's in the footing. You know, if you just uh, stick with it, stick fat, I think is what I'm trying yeah. to say. Stick fat with some of the, uh, some of the experience and who knows what might happen. I feel like you look at North, you only have to look at North as an example of doing it wrong. If you get it <laughs> no, that's not rough, Brayden. If you get it wrong, it's pretty... You know, it's pretty well known. They yeah. they did the full cull and got rid of like a, a bunch of their stars. They got rid of Ben Brown, Drew Petrie. They got rid of 
like uh, Gold Del Steen, Santo. Got got, like they got back in the day, they got rid of everyone. They got rid of Boomer Harvey when people thought he still had years left. Mm. Cut real deep, and then they just haven't been able to come back from it. So there's yeah. there's something about the cut real deep. You got to be super cautious because that means you got no senior players there to teach the young guys. Yeah, you might have a whole heap of talented young guys, but do they, do they develop without they the direction. senior guys? They need direction. Interesting. Let's jump to into Frio sure. Western Bulldogs because Frio were coming off the West Coast Eagles oh, loss. Oh, it was rough. And boy, did they respond Ooh. because they came out. They beat uh, Western Bulldogs, who were. Also great. It, it, yeah. The score kind of is ref- – it looks like it's a bit more one-sided, but it was really, you know, Frio broke their back late and then got a couple of late goals. Um, but Libba out uh, <laughs> late in the funny. piece with illness. So yeah. he, he's coming back from his concussion, flew all the way to Perth, yeah. and then out late with illness, which uh, which would suck. Just have just, another – you could have another just, week on the couch, feet oh. up. And instead, you essentially spent 12 hours and travel to go there and back for nothing. <laughs> oh, and you're not even allowed to be around the players because uh, you're ill. So then you're not even like hanging out with the team. There's no benefit to you being there. Yeah. You're just sitting in a hotel room being sick. Yeah, and Caleb Daniel was an emergency traveling over there. So he yeah. wouldn't have even been pumped on the way over because he's like, I'm doing that trip. I'm going all the way over and I'm not going <laughs> to even get a game, but Libber out. Uh, so that meant Caleb Daniel got to come in late as the sub. Yeah, <laughs> That's a little consolation. Uh, but you know who was back? Nat Fife, yeah, baby. Boy. 37 touches, seven clearances and a goal. That's scary. He was... He was back to old Nat Five, pushing him off, oh, getting the getting the ball out to the outside to the mm. users, use the users as they say. Strong body. Caleb Sarong also matched him with thirty seven, but he got seventeen clearances, mate. Thirty seven touches and seventeen <laughs> clearances. Are you? Do I don't they know if else maybe stick clearance. someone on him? Yeah. How many clearances does it take for you to realize that maybe this guy's kind of? Oh, it important hurts. for yeah, but when Nat Fife is up and running, True. you're like, you're who do we go to, to? Let's go uh, with just none lock of them. down, <laughs> lock down everyone in the midfield at that point. All right, uh, and it sucks because obviously they needed the helps with the clearances, and Libba would have done that, but out sick. Mm. Uh, Bailey Banfield, the hero though, back to back goals late. Yep. which kind of broke the back of the Bulldogs, like I was saying. Uh, he finished with three for the day, which is great because he was last year in and out. He was always that sub, the fringe player. Uh, so he came in and, uh, yeah, looked pumped when he was drilling Good those confidence. goals. Uh, Waitman, an injury with his elbow. Yeesh. Injured it the other week but played it out. Yeah, That's why he's wearing he's his – He's got the sleeve. He's got the sleeve. AI sleeve, Allen Iverson sleeve. Yeah, right. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Or the Jeremy House leave. <laughs> didn't help him. Didn't help him because he's he did it again, going for a crazy unrealistic hanger, but uh, came down hard on his elbow. Oh. Knew straight away they took him off and subbed out straight away. Uh, so that's unfortunate. Jeez. And it's still just more questions for their forward line because they've only got tools. Yeah. They've only got tools for the forward line. And Waitman was, you know, super needed and necessary to crumb off all these tall timbers. Uh, but, yeah, now he's out. So I don't know what they do because Sam Darcy kicked three uh, and oh, Dick Tracy up the other end, kicked three. Dick Tracy. Love Dick. And uh, <laughs> Bailey Dale, 30 and two. Uh, he's, it's weird, right? They've got yeah. this weird conundrum, right? When Bailey Dale starts as a sub, he comes on and uh, he gets a few touches. When he just plays a whole game, it's weird because he gets like 30 plus and kicks like a goal or two. So I don't oh, know what you do. That, Should yeah. you keep him as the sub or do you, I don't know. I feel like tons of players can have 30 plus and kick multiple goals. Um, so maybe you keep him as the sub. <laughs> And don't allow him to get those touches and goals. Safe to say you're a fan. Yeah. Well, it doesn't make sense to me, does it? And I I assume it doesn't make any sense to any Bulldogs fan that's like, this guy last two weeks, last week he had like 39 and a goal and was tearing it up. Goal assists, score involvements. They have a few questions around who they've kind of been bringing in and taking out over the last few weeks. Like even Caleb Daniel, like his... Yeah, a guy who's one of the best kicks on their team, pulling him out and putting him as an emergency and stuff like this. It's... Yeah, there's been a few questions around the, uh, you know, who's who's getting pulled up every single week. And they were good in this game, like I said, right until the very end. And this one, I was bringing it up before we uh, recorded, oh but the hybrid. <laughs> Here we go. Patrick Voss kicked a goal on debut, so yeah. obviously Patrick Cripps and then yeah. Michael Voss, and we combined them together. We've got Patrick Voss, Patty Voss. 
That's a lot of responsibility on his that's, shoulders. That's he's got to be good, but he was. So he's good. what getting sixty touches and five goals a game. Is that what we're going he's, with? He'll build into it. He'll build into uh, it. Kick the goal on debut. Goal on debut, which we love to see. Feel good. Everyone got around him as they should. Um, yeah. Feel good moment. We'll put that in that basket. Uh, we go over to the West Coast, Gold Coast, no East Coast rivalry. Uh, we got Gold Coast. Your boys got the dub in the end yes, because West, West Coast started pretty hot. They did. I know. They I were coming nervous. off. Two back-to-back wins, and it looked early like it was going to be three on the trot. Uh, but Gold Coast said, ah-ah, and they yeah. said one goal to six in the third quarter, which was the difference for the game because yep. West Coast started hot. They pegged it back, level running, and then one goal to six in the third, and then even last quarter. Yeah. So, see, if you're a West Coast fan, you you're can pretty happy right you now, can I find think. some positives in that. You're yeah. like, geez, thereabouts, ran them to the edge. Gold Coast, they're no pushover. Undefeated at People First Stadium. Now, this is weird. I thought that Queensland's undefeated stadium last year was the Gabba. Yeah, that's... Now that's, it's moved that's to gone. the People's First. Moved down the road. It's moved down the road. <laughs> oh, man. They're undefeated. They're undefeated. undefeated. They're undefeated. People's First. You know, we love the people. Uh, a big that's, winner. Kicked the goal from outside uh, We fitting. talked about this. We <laughs> talked about this. We're like, we got to get Woodsy to get a goal. So it was hyped when we kicked that. So, yeah, he must have heard us talk shit last that's week. About that's got to be it. He was like, yeah. you know, I'm going to show these boys outside 50 meters. <laughs> he was working on his goal kicking all week, <laughs> uh, but went back, <laughs> kicked the goal uh, to open the account. <laughs> um, <laughs> and, yeah, Liam Ryan back, yeah, which is great. We love to see Flying Ryan back out there. Like to see... A lot of the West Coast players come back because yeah. they've just been... Oh, injury just, after injury. It's been savage. So it's been good to see Liam Ryan out there kick the goal and the water man. He's been on the fire. The sprinkler. Dude. He's he kicked doesn't another stop. four. We can't do it this week. He's going to kick five. No. But I mean like four. He's what kicked... He's kicked 14 at least in the last three weeks. Yeah, at least. Insane. Like, what? 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 <laughs> I, don't, I don't know how it works because you look at it, right? Yeah. Not a big hulking key four. Mm. Not in the best team by yeah. any stretch. And he's killing it. He's absolutely killing it. 14 goals in I, three games. I don't, I don't think there's a better forward out there that's kicked more goals. Nah. Over the three-week span. Nah, not that consistent. Nah, I don't think so. So water him down. Yeah. Hype uh, to him. <laughs> Hype to him. The old water man. Water him down. Water him down. Uh, <laughs> Who King, else we got? We got King. King kick three, but we're not giving him the crown. Three's not a back. Uh, yeah. Noah Anderson, Good quiet game. 33 touches, 12 clearances, two goals. Matty Rao, also Matty a stinker, Cal. 22, nine clearances on, and two mate. goals. 22, Lift nine and two. I think he went all right. I love those when you got, what, 21 clearances between the two blokes, four goals. You're seeing these people really kind of shine though. Noah Anderson, Matt Rao, they're really, I feel like every single time we do this, we're always talking about those two people and yeah. it's, it's good to see the icons of that club, mm. you know, being able to to be successful and and live up to the hype that comes with it. I love the guys like um, Sam Day playing forward for Gold Coast, mm. kicked the goal, but he's a day one. Yeah, he's yeah, been yeah. there he's like been the there whole way long, through. Long so time. I love to see the guys sticking around, uh, having the success. We move into Hawthorne versus Sydney. Whoa. Now Sam Mitchell came <laughs> after the <laughs> game <laughs> said, "Now I reckon." Tell the, me the score. What was the score? No, off. wait on. This should be the advice for all Hawthorne <laughs> fans just watching any game for the rest of the year. If, yeah. He said, if you don't see the scoreboard, you think, geez, these Hawk boys have had a good crack. Mm. But unfortunately, the what scoreboard the score exists. <laughs> and they lost by, what, 70, 80-odd points, oh, uh, which, isn't, which isn't great. So maybe ignore that. Uh, Heaney kicked three, 21 touches. He's just continually upping his game. Yep. But he was just, you know, he blended in with the rest of them because they mm. were all good. It all was so there. hard to pick, you know, they sent McInerney out as the sub. He had 19 touches, four goal assists. He set up four goals and they're like, mate. They're like, not good enough. <laughs> <the bench. laughs> not good enough. Gould, Take a spell. <laughs> you got Goulden, the lizard. He had 30 streaming through the middle off. You casually. can't let the lizard get 30 touches. Nah. Uh, oh, but yeah, they were, uh, they, they just, Tear it up. They were, uh, they're just so good. They got so many good mids that, like, I don't know. Imagine being one of the forwards in their team. That imagine they're... being Brody Grundy. You just, yeah, Brody. I mean, you could, you could hit it out and just hit it anywhere. You hit it anywhere. <laughs> just, like, just gotta get a touch it. You get the head out, everyone advantage. gets stabbed. We're all happy. Two advantages uh. anywhere. Uh, but there was some interesting stuff. Marby Ochoa was getting Bronx cheered, and Yeesh. that's. It's rough, but it happens. And it was. Been there. It was. <laughs> been there. It was due to. Pretty much one incident yeah. and then a couple of other. But Blake Hardwick, uh, we all know he's kind of moved from defense to f the forward line because he, he did it a couple of weeks ago and just kicked like 
four goals straight or whatever. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, oh, we found one here. Moved him forward. He he took a mark on, on the 50 arc, went back and was going to kick one from 55 out. Let's let's give it to him. Yeah. Going straight through the middle, Marby or Chol pushes someone over in the pocket and they reverse <laughs> the decision. Free kick from where he took the kick from, went straight down the other end and Sydney kicked the goal. Oh. So not great. And then to make up for it, he got done holding the ball next touch and then oh. a couple of turnovers and that's where the Bronxies came from. So not great. But there was no Bronx cheers directed towards the next man because he's a living legend mm. for both Sydney and Hawthorne. I talk about Buddy Franklin the returned man. to the G. Uh, to standing O uh, from both fans, yeah. Because boy, did he treat them both right. Man, I mean, he was—he's one of the icons of the game of our generation, right? Thousand goals, um, you know, played for both those teams, very successful in both those teams, and he was playing. And it was cool to go back, and he won the two, honestly, two premierships with Hawthorne. Be able to go in front of their fans for probably the first time, really not as opposition, mm. um, and be able to kind of get a, a standing go at the MCG is a pretty cool experience for him and his family. It was really nice. Like you had, you know, all those older guys, you got Roughhead and all them. And they got the kids running around, and they're all hanging out together, and they're all still mates. And it's it's cool. It's such like a cool and just feel good feeling to see that, you know, on television and to see that they're all still connected through those times, and you know, have that that history between them is. It was pretty, uh, pretty amazing to see. I'm sure Buddy would have loved it over the weekend, just being able to, I guess, get acknowledgement from both those teams before, um, you know, his final time probably at the MCG for a while. It's a cool thing about flags, hey? Yeah. You just linked forever, and it'd be pretty cool being linked forever with Buddy Franklin. <laughs> it's like one of the best. I think ever. everyone else is probably t- saying to their friends, "I played with Buddy." I don't yeah. think Buddy's going to many people yeah. going, "I played with so and so." Yeah, <laughs> yeah, for sure. I played with. No, I don't, I don't want to single out place. Uh, let's move into the game that we're all wanting to hear about. Uh, and hopefully this segment isn't as big a fizz as the draw. Mm. Uh, we talk about the Essendon-Collingwood draw for Anzac Day. Massive game. Very good game. Yeah. Very good game. Kind of start to finish. Essendon out of the blocks quick. Four goals in about seven minutes. Just went bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. Uh, is that a worrying trend? Uh, it's never ideal. Uh, it's never ideal to have to be a climb back from the beginning of the game. So uh, it's something we'll look at as a club. I think it's happened the last couple of games mm. in a row. We've kind of had teams come out and jump us a bit early. So, uh, yeah, it's it's not ideal, but, you know, we, we have to find a way to be able to stop the, the flow of it, you know, be able to make sure that whenever we start the game, we start hot and, uh, you know, can get the ball forward and not let them uh, be able to get un- uncontested marks and kick goals like they were over the weekend so quickly. It was... Um, you know, I started in the forward line. It's like a, it's a tough thing as a forward. I mean, yeah. everyone that's played football, you know, whenever you just kind of goal after goal after goal, you're going, oh, I've got, I want to impact somehow. <laughs> you know, you want to be able to try to do something, but sometimes it's a bit out of your, you know, out of your wheelhouse, or you know, the ball just doesn't come near you. But don't ever think of spitting off the back of the square and getting someone holding the ball. Not me personally. <laughs> Maybe some of the small forwards would do it, but uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be, you know, the big lighthouse up there in the forward fifty. Just kick it up. I'll the come beacon. down with it. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's uh, yeah, we'll we'll look into it this week and we'll try to sort it out. But it has has been a you know the last two games, it has been something that's happened. Two games, probably not a trend. It's not yet. No, I wouldn't say a trend is two games. Don't yet. want it to be a trend. Mm. Let's go back to the start of the game. I think there was a video online, uh, tight shot of Pendles, Mister Ten Thousand. We'll talk yeah. about that soon. Big jets come screaming over the top <laughs> while you guys are lined up. And he says it looks like some words to the effect, I just fucking shit myself. <laughs> was that? I shit myself watching it on the broadcast. Was that loud as shit? It was very loud, but for me, it was normal. I'm American, so we used to see, <laughs> we used to see jets all over the place. Um, no, it was well because the, they went over like kind of earlier before, and I kind of thought to myself, I was like, oh, they – Bit early, <laughs> bit premature, bro. <laughs> bit premature, um, and then you know you have that thing where they they time it really well, which yeah. is pretty incredible, I guess, to be like, all right, cool. You know, they're about to finish the anthem. They're probably getting a live feed to them or whatever it is, and you know, as soon as that's done, in the moment of or the minute of silence, they go straight over, and you hear the roar of the crowd, and it's it's one of the biggest you know noises you'll hear at the MCG is that right that moment right after the the minute of silence where everyone just gets out of their seat and goes absolutely nuts and. Um, is all excited for the game, and you just kind of do that 360 of just you know, in awe moment. Um, and it's it's an incredible day. Like we'll we'll talk about it, I'm sure. But um, yeah, it's it's amazing to be involved, to be able to give respect to the Anzacs, and then you know talking to all the people like that are walking up. Like we walked with a few Anzacs over to the uh, stadium, which was really cool, and and talking to them and stuff like that. Where 
you know, you get all these different stories that come in and all these different um, things that have happened and you get to pay respect and honor to these people at you know, we take for granted what they do every day, probably, um, and it's cool to be able to show, I guess, showcase what they do on a on a day like that and on such a big occasion. Is the crowd cheer louder than the Jets? Yeah, I think so. I mean, the Jets was a surprise. I mean, like the crowd, though, you're like, here we go. Yeah. Here we go. And you get that tingly feel, and like, all right, it's game time. Let's do this thing. Uh, but it was a bit sketch. It was, <laughs> well, it was just Pen- like, oh, yeah. there was like six of them. So yeah. it wasn't just one. Yeah. It wasn't like one big jet. It was like six in like a full triangle formation. I'm like, woo, Nelly. Pendles often doesn't get caught by surprise, but I yeah. think they snuck up on him, the old fella. <laughs> the old fella. <laughs> Turn the hearing aid up a bit. Uh, let's uh, jump into his 10,000th disposal. What yeah. an accomplishment. It was a pretty Pendles-esque handball too. He just – He's almost Stopped like, in time. He's, he was like 4998 and like 4998 or something like that. So it was like he almost could get to five and five for his 10,000th, like yeah. five, which is crazy to think you have an even number of handballs and kicks for your 10,000th disposal. That's wild. It's pretty weird, eh? And then I think he ended up being two off. So he's like, he's right. still got a few more kicks to go to get to 5,000. He's about uh, a few over on the handballs. He did the, um, it was, he got it and then everyone was running past expecting him to do one thing and he obviously does the other yep. and he just stopped got around one and handballed it off to unfortunately Darcy Cameron probably not the guy <laughs> that you want to <laughs> you're talking about people you'll sit there and say I played with yeah. <laughs> I think Darcy Cameron's probably at the moment going yeah I played with Pendles back in the day he, he put it on his boots so quick he's oh, like that's yeah, what a Ruckman does why are you giving it to me <laughs> he's probably usually, standing there it's clapping it's usually and, going it's usually going one and back for the yeah, two <laughs> like, I wasn't calling for it I was cheering the 10,000th um, but yeah amazing amazing accomplishment and I yeah. feel like he's just ticking him off he's yeah. he's going to have that many other things that he ticks off and I don't think Same. he wanted to be you know obviously rib injury yeah. um, but I feel like he wouldn't have ever have been missing games or whatever just because I don't know he just, he's, he's stubborn uh, he's stubborn he's a professional as everyone knows and it's it's pretty incredible between him and Steele to be playing with two uh, sorry the top two games played players mm. of Collingwood's history it's yeah. kind of weird to say and crazy to think, but like them two, you know, the, the memories and the experiences they've shared throughout their career, it's it's pretty amazing for them to still be kind of hitting these milestones even uh, even now. And it's it's cool to be able to celebrate it with them. And um, I'm sure he's got – I think he has a wine out or something like that. He's got some kind of freaking wine for yeah, everything yeah. he does. He's always yeah. got a little cash coming his way. I think um, as well – and you can fine drop. You can tell me. I'm sure it's a great drop. You can tell me more about this, but the way that both of them prepare very different. You got Steele, bloke yeah. from the country, mm. has admitted that he's only really just started focusing on you know his body and recovery and longevity, <laughs> as compared to Pendles, who's been like I don't know. Yeah. He's like compared to like LeBron or something. Like he's got a sauna and a pool and a cold, like all at his house. Uh, he's and got stuff. everything. He's got a full recovery center at his house and. Um, yeah, Steele's one of those just players. And I mean, Jack Crisp, very similar, right? Mm-hmm. He's played that many games in a row. And uh, there's some that just don't, you know, they're fortunate enough to not have so many injuries yeah. in their career. And, um, you know, Steele now, like, it's it's a credit to him, I guess, you know, to be able to, you know, you're getting further down in your career and you got to find ways to still be better and still find a way to be able to thrive. And he's still doing that today. You know, he's um, he's doing, I guess, a bit more on his recovery stuff and everything else and, and understands kind of where his body's at now to be able to help perform. So, it's a credit to him, man. It's pretty cool to be playing with such iconic players. And like I said, at some point in my retirement days, I'm sure someone will say I was calling good. And I said it was pretty cool to play with the likes of, you know, Steele and Pendles and, and Nick and the rest of them. Now, before we move on, speaking about Pendles, we have to put one of your teammates on notice, I Here feel. Here we go. Because Jordan DeGoey. Yeah. Big loopy handball to Pendles that got him in a predicament where he hurt his ribs, right? Yeah. Ah, it happens. Mm-hmm. It happens. We don't like to see it. Pendles, statesman, we don't. But he did it again on the weekend. Big <laughs> loopy handball. And I think this time it was to Nick Dacos. And it's like, what are you doing? Can we <laughs> can we stop trying to injure the best players on the team? Because I don't know what he's doing, but he's a big fan of handballing over the guy that's coming at him. And mm. it goes straight up. And then the it's poor bloke real... has to get underneath it and just hope that his ribs don't get shattered. Now there's um yeah not not ideal uh, trying to get it forward. I'm uh, George is trying to do the right thing, right? But um it, it reminds me of <laughs> was it last year? There was a point where I got the ball in the middle of the ground. And I look up and Nick's doing a backwards forty five 
lead, right? In the middle of the ground. I try to kick it to him. I do kick it to him and it gets to him, but he's going back with the flight. And it's like, in my mind, it's this slow motion. I can see the defender just full coming, full steam ahead at Nick. And I'm going, the ball's in the air. I've already, I can't control this situation anymore. And I see Nick going back and I'm like trying to yell to him at the same time. I'm like, just spoil it. Get out of the way. Get out of the way. And somehow in his own fashion, he like taps it somehow. It doesn't go for the mark. Like taps it, gets around the guy and then it's okay. And I remember just sitting there after the game, I go, I almost killed your career. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> <laughs> you almost killed his career. It would have been the death of your career. Yeah, I would have been gone in a heartbeat. That's for sure. <laughs> just start running. I'll never forget it. it running just, down the race. I could see my career ending in slow motion. Good luck, fellas. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, let's move on from there because uh, we do have something very special to talk about. Jamie yes. Elliott. Holy shit. He's, it's not his oh. first time, but it, it could quite possibly be the highest he's ever got. He's taken Insane. some absolute screamers, but where were you? Talk us through the Jamie Elliott. Oh, I'm sitting on the bench. I'm exhausted. I'm like kind of sitting there, and you know, you, you have uh, Makai, who's you know, big boy, big right, boy. Big two fella, meters, you know, two meters, and, and Jamie's sitting there about four or five meters off him, right? And he's out the back, and that's a good feeling as a you know, small player, and you know, have that position where you can see both man and the ball, and you kind of see him just kind of like you know, stalking him, and the ball gets kicked, and let's be honest, like Jamie's not the tallest bloke, so we've no. got to figure out a way for him to get up there, so. He kind of does the one, two, three steps, and then you see him get the hands on the back, and that's yeah. whenever you know it's going to be a, a, a f- pretty good specky, right? Yeah. You get the full second lift, sit on him for a minute, or sorry, a second or two, take the clunk, and it was just, it was in slow-mo, and then you see the reaction of the crowd, and it's not just calling with people. Like, Estee people are like, yeah. oh, damn! <laughs> like, yeah. That was insane. And then, I was there, did you see the replay? Everyone's looking for the replay, you know, and everything else, and it was just, I felt bad for, for Makai because I was like, man, that's going to be iconically played over yeah. and over and again, and you're going to be on a poster for the rest of your life, bro. But yeah. it was it was what a spec he is. It was a spectacular mark to sit there and you know see live. I was just, oh, I was beyond losing my mind. I was like, this is incredible. And I, like, I mean, if someone beats that this year for mark of the year, <laughs> I will be amazed. Hey, if someone beats that, I feel like there needs to be a change to the system. We already saw Jeremy Howe get screwed, <laughs> get screwed over. over Joe Denver, it yep. becomes a popularity contest. We, maybe we need some professionals to come in. No, don't do this on Pyre's decide. No, this. no, don't, I reckon no, just no, like no, 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 I reckon no. we high flyers. The midfielders I reckon award. High we don't need flyers. to do it again. Like it needs to be like like a Jeremy Howe when he retires should go into that panel. Like yeah, high okay. flyers from the past need to come in. Who and, who's on your high flyers list? Um, the Birdman. Uh, Burton from yeah, okay. used to play for Adelaide. I saw him one day. He fully jumped over. It was a Collingwood player, but he fully he was behind him, ran and jumped over the top of him, took the mark and just kept running. It's like <laughs> stuff like that. Maybe um Modra, yeah, Godra, okay, takes a mark. A few of those guys. Didak? Ashley Ashley Sampy. What about mm. him? His one was huge. But I feel like yeah, it's what you were talking about. But you're on the poster, whatever our version of the poster is. You get that little poster in the Herald Sun. Oh, but you um, you best believe that's made into a footy. Card. It was very like <laughs> that is for sure. Going I feel like Jake Carlisle forever was the guy that was underneath uh, Andrew Walker when Andrew Walker yes. took that mark. I feel like uh, in terms of a mark, you're looking for who it was over. So yeah. was he tall? So yeah. he's ticked that box. Ticked that box for sure. Did he land on his feet or did he land on the ground? And he landed on the ground. I think yeah. that's important. You want to make the landing look a bit more spectacular. Yeah. Yeah. yeah he yeah. one clunked it. Yeah. Didn't double grab. No. Nah, and he yeah. had his hands up. It wasn't in the chest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So all of those things, ah, oh, it's just, it's as good as it gets. It is. It's one of the best parts of AFL. Yeah. And to do it on such a big day in front of such a big crowd, like the roar after it was just hilarious. Like I saw the replay the other day and, you see, you know, you take like a, you pause it and you look at the crowd's reaction behind it and yeah. it is one of the funniest things. Yeah, You've yeah. got like all kinds of different fans and just amazement or bemusement and then there's ones just shocked and then there's Essendon people pissed and there's like yeah. other people calling for a free kick. Like it's just anything and everything behind. It was just so good. I think Fly said that he thought he went too early. Oh man, he was up there for like a good second or two. And you got to think, like you have to, like the judgment of the ball you have to know that, like, like, if you don't sit up there for a second or two, like, it's yeah. going over you. Yeah. Like, you're not getting it. Yeah. So it's one of those things. Like, he fully committed to knowing he's going to be up there for a decent amount of time before he brought the thing down. Yeah. 
Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Mm. Uh, let's talk about Harvey Harrison because yep. he came in super as sub. he came as as the super sub. And I tell you what, I have I haven't seen a lot of him. Yep. You would have seen plenty of him. Uh, so I want you to tell me about him. But from what I could see, yep. very clean. Just went straight like mm. Anzac Day. You're a kid coming on Anzac Day. Go straight into the guts. Yeah. Very clean. Dished it out a couple of times, and then under. Immense pressure, threw it on his boot, kicked the goal. Kicks our last goal. Had was, yeah. such impact for the small amount of time in a massive game under very tough circumstances. One flies got a that's a lot of trust to be like, all right, it's the heat's on. We mm. take Tom Mitchell out, Brownlow medalist. Yeah, he's been there before. He's he's been there under the pressure. We'll take him out and we'll chuck you in. Yeah, I think it comes down to experience. I mean, I think. He's been performing above the VFL level on a weekly weekly basis. And, you know, sometimes you, you probably don't hear these names and stuff like that, but they are, you know, pushing for selection. They're always in the emergencies and things like that. And, um, you know, we, we probably looked at it and said, look, let's try to get another person in there. I can do that pressure. can be a, you know, small forward and be able to get to the ball. And and Harvey was there on the weekend and, and, and stepped up to the plate. You know, it's all about that taking that opportunity whenever it's given to you and making the most of it. And uh, you look at what he did over the weekend, kicking that goal and, and the way he played. And like you said, him being so clean and everything else, you know, I think he, he'd be pretty impressed with the way he handled himself and handled the moment and handled the occasion. So it's a credit to him. Uh, you know, you keep doing that, you'll you'll start finding yourself in the team on a weekly basis. So hopefully he can continue that form and, you know, you might be seeing a lot more of him. A bit of m M&M about that. One shot, one opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> hey, man, it's uh, yeah, it's not easy to do in front of 90 plus thousand. <laughs> yeah. uh, Game and, on the line. And we talk about uh, opportunities missed because yeah. Langford, who was a dead eye all day. Kick four and then missed the last one. Oh, it. Which was kickable. And was, if, he, if he kicks that, wins the Anzac medal, right? Surely. Yeah, yeah. Surely well, Five goals, including the match winner, surely. So he's, what are you saying? He's, he's missed himself a medal. I think so. uh, yeah. And then Elliot. He did. He did take one screen mm, after the day. Fans were all just seeing it. <laughs> Deja vu. I feel like yeah. If you're an Essendon fan, you're having flashbacks. Um, and Jamie just couldn't grab it. Pretty much the opposite side in the corner, but yeah. in the same like spot on the arc. Jeez, and then he would have only have had to have kicked a score. But I feel like both teams feel like they just missed out on an opportunity by just a hair. Yeah. So the draw is probably. It's probably okay. No one wants the draw. Both no. teams had an opportunity at the end to win the game. Yeah. And unfortunately, it didn't go for either team to, to win the game, and the, and the draw was the case. And this, this whole idea of around, you know, all of a sudden now we're questioning the draw, and it's like, oh, well, do we play extra time and all this? And I don't know, I don't know what your you know opinion would be on it. Like, I, I find it kind of amazing that, you know, all of a sudden there's the, this is a draw because it's on such a big occasion and everything else, people freak out about it. Like, the draw was never an issue beforehand. Yeah. But because it was on Anzac Day, all of a sudden now it's blown up to be this big kind of talking point. Yeah, I was, I've always been on the one side of the draw where I feel like, nah, no team was good enough to win it, so mm. it should end in a draw. And then, obviously, finals, we go into extra time. Yeah, you have to. Yep. So, But I did hear one thing from Jonathan Brown where he said his biggest um, – I guess, argument for extra time during the home and away is on behalf of all the other teams, the other 16 teams, because it's basically like you and Essendon both get a win because you don't have to really worry about percentage anymore unless other teams have the draw because both teams essentially have like a half win. Yeah. Okay. So it's like it disadvantages the rest of the teams, not the two teams on the day. You also have a half loss though. Yeah, but I don't know. Uh, it's yeah, it's an interesting one. It I, takes the percentage. I understand what you're saying. It takes, takes the percentage, percentage out, out because you know, like you have to win X amount of games after that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I do I, get that, but I, I just still don't think that they should take the draw away because then I, I don't know. I mean, like, how, how long are you going to go? Well, if it's a draw and then you go overtime, then extra yeah. time, extra time, and then extra time, extra time. I mean, games already in, in pretty late. Yeah, like, I feel like there's there's not enough draws for it to be an issue. Yes, if there's draws like all the time, you got to do something about it. But it's like. One a season. Yeah. I think it's just because of the occasion, the build up, everything else, the anticipation of Anzac Day and all that. And then to get to the end of it and you're sitting there going, who gets the trophy? What captain does the speech? Like there was just kind of, yeah, everyone was a bit ignorant to what to do. Yeah. Um, and people walk out of the stadium going, I don't know out. how to feel, you yeah. know? And it's like, well, I'm upset because I didn't win, but I'm also not mad because we didn't lose. And then you just go to the pub and you're just sitting there contemplating life. It was <laughs> like, going, what's it, going on? It was very fitting because you come yeah. into the day, it's got this like, 
not eerie, but there's a feeling, an yeah. emotion about the the day, and then you leave the football <laughs> the same way. Really, <laughs> there was just a a weird feeling about it. But yeah, I don't know. Is that your first draw? Uh, I think it is. I, I might have been involved in one other, but that's um, I've seen them before live. But uh, to be in a game of the draw, I think, like I said, because it was such a big game, it was a weird feeling after. Because there's so many, there's so much ceremony after and stuff that happens, mm. and then. Um, I think even the players are just kind of like, well, what do we do? Like, what's yeah. you know, what's the protocol here? Like, what do we? How do we handle this? We were talking about last week, Darcy Moore. How's he one up his speech? <laughs> and I feel yeah. bad. What about oh. Merritt? Merritt's just like the kid from the um, group project, just standing there, like, yeah. Well, he he won the medal, so then he gave his speech. Remember, he got the medal, and then I'm, I'm sitting there, and Darcy's giving his speech, did really well. And I remember I just sit there and look at Merritt, and I think he just leans back to the lady that's there for the ceremonies. He goes. Yeah, I think that'll do. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. No need for me to jump back yeah, up well, and say the same thing again. Yeah, we'll what, be all right. <laughs> what he said about all the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. But no, it was, uh, it was good about Darcy. But that was the round. That was the round that was. And uh, that was, was, was. And <laughs> big, big round next it, round. It's, it's rivalry round. I reckon the fixed ring thing. Next round. Oh, this is one of the rounds of the year, I think. All the different, different rivalries. There's uh, Darby's left, right, and center. There's the Battle of Queensland. There's. You know, there's the Battle of, uh, Battle of the Bridge. Battle of the Bridge. There's the Battle of Adelaide. It's Show all down. happening. And then there's yeah. the big Collingwood versus Carlton game, obviously, too. So we will get into that. That's going to release on Thursday afternoon, I want to say. Thursday yeah. morning, maybe. Thursday afternoon. Thursday afternoon. Oh, we're going to release that. But it is uh, that it for the review of the Anzac weekend. Uh, yeah, lots of injuries for Port Adelaide. Some stuff that didn't happen so well. But Geelong's still on, on fire at the moment. And um, Anzac Day was a bit of a weird feeling. Weird feel after. Yeah, but it's what it is. But I just want to say thank you, everyone, for listening into this episode. It's been awesome. Uh, make sure you check out Thursday's Ep 2 for the preview this week. It's going to be big. But from us, that's it. So enjoy the rest of the day. Have a good one. We'll speak to you soon. Peace. Yeah.